Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we're going to talk about how to alleviate pain and decrease fatigue when riding electric wheels. And this video will apply both to beginner riders and also the more advanced ones. So let me tell you more about it. So I've been riding electric wheels for over two years now. Uh, I've put over 20,000, maybe around 25, 30,000 kilometers on the clock. And in that time, I've learned it, well, the hard way sort of, on uh, how to get comfortable when riding EUC. And when it comes to questions I get about EUC, probably the one that pops up most often, or is one of the more popular ones, is, is it even comfortable? or is it like, you know, riding in circus? And the answer is, for longer rides, this is my favorite means of transportation by far. Compared to scooters, compared to bicycles, compared to cars, compared to every form of transportation, maybe except for trains, because there you can just walk around or sit and do whatever, sort of. Uh, but in this video, I'll tell you about nine things, I have just one hand free, nine, hit, nine things you want to know to decrease fatigue and pain uh, when riding EUC. And we will go from the more boink, from the more simple ones and sort of free techniques, you don't really have to pay for them, uh, down to the more costly and advanced ones. Anyways, let's get into it and start with the first thing you need to know. And this is targeted more towards the newer riders. If you've just started riding on EUC, this is for you. The thing is that riding EUC or electric wheels requires different muscle combinations and different movements than both walking and cycling. So it is very natural that at first you will get some pain, you will get some more stress in your muscles, and you might get sore after the first couple of rides. But don't shy away from, from that. This is quite normal. And just like riding a bike first or trying out a new sport, you will probably experience some pain in your muscles. So when trying out this new wheel, make sure to make a couple stops when riding when you get really tired of it. Make sure to also take a break for a day or two to start riding again after your muscles feel well again. And yeah, just take it easy, listen to your body and get through the exercise. Most of the issues when it comes to pain in your leg muscles and your all-in-all -all muscles when riding phase away pretty much after 200 or 300 kilometers. Naturally, depends on the rider, but that was the experience for me. So when you start riding EUC, be prepared that you will use different muscles because riding electric wheels is still a sport. It requires balance. It requires the different muscles to work at the same time in tandem to make riding possible and balancing on the wheel. So however, don't be scared of that. It's not that difficult. It's actually, I think, quite manageable and easy to learn, but nonetheless requires practice. With that said, let's get to the next point. The second thing I wanted to talk about is the setting of the EUC itself. And I made a more detailed video about it called Which Mode. You can check it out here. But I'll gloss over the most important settings that you can select on your electric unicycle to make it more comfy. First of all, make sure to check out the different ride modes. Now, depending on the manufacturer, there might be different names for it. it might be soft mode, medium mode and hard mode, or strong mode, sport mode, but their purpose is very similar. So, we have strong mode, which transforms your leaning directly into acceleration. Then we have medium mode, which lets the wheel tilt a bit to help you with acceleration and braking. This medium mode is a pretty good, well, medium, both for riding uh, off-road and on-road, but it's not designed for super sporty riding. Then there's also soft mode, uh, and it lets the wheel float around a lot, creating a very comfy ride 
when going over bumps and bad road surfaces. So if you are riding in really bad conditions, maybe try out soft mode. Now, these are not the only things you can select on your EUC. You can also select the pedal angle. So essentially, I am riding with my wheel tilted like this. My toes are lower than my heels because then I can accelerate a little easier. You can also have the wheel just flat, which is a all in all good setting, or you can have the wheel tilted upwards as well. For me, the most comfortable setting is, as said, like this into the front, but if you go heavy off-roading or if you want to climb some stairs, some other crazy stuff, you might want to tilt it like this uh, because uh, it will get, give you a higher pedal clearance in the front. So you can select the pedal angle that's most comfortable for you. Check out both tilted front and back, ride 10, 20, 30 kilometers with it, see how it works for you and select your favorite. The last thing when it comes to this point is the calibration of the wheel. So there is a setting in the app where you can set up how the wheel is calibrated in one, most wheels. Uh, you can do it via EUC World or the app of the manufacturer. And what you want to do is basically have the wheel either leaning against the wall, get it being straight up, or just holding on to it like this, calibrating it so the wheel will actually like turn off and it will be free to move. And then once you finish calibrating it, it should not, the pedals shouldn't move when you move the wheel to the side like that. So if they go up or down in opposite directions, then you need to calibrate it again. But if they stay flat, then you're fine. So you can also observe it when riding. If the pedals go up when you turn in one side and they go down in the other, then it means your wheel isn't well calibrated and this might lead to uh, a less comfy ride and more fatigue. All right, with that said, let's move on to point number three. When riding EUC, make sure that you check out different possibilities of stands and cornering. So this is a tip also from Monocat, check out her channel as well, and concentrates the most on your feet and how you distribute the weight onto the wheel and onto the foot plates. So what Monocat first noticed when riding EUC is that she was getting a lot of pain when leaning outwards with your feet when riding EUC, especially on turns. And the remedy to that is to either put most of your weight balanced onto the whole foot plate with your foot or even tilt a bit inwards. Now, when I have tilted pedals like this from Nilanova, it's sort of automatically happening. But then on turns, um, you can also use different techniques to lean in to the turn. The main point is to possibly put the most weight of your body flat onto the pedals or even on the inside of your foot to alleviate pain. But let me show that to you in practice as well. So now I'm cornering with putting my weight onto this leg. And you see that immediately the DUC tilts, I don't tilt so much with my body. Then there is the technique when you're pulling with the outside foot then I have to lean a bit more with my upper body to make the turn. Or you just <laughs> sort of tilt with your whole body, which is the most fun, is the carving. But what you want to avoid, in my opinion, is to try doing this sort of thing, to sort of turn with your outside, with the outside of the foot, because this will create strain and this might also create pain. I hope that was somewhat understandable and followable. But also, if you have any, uh, tips on how to alleviate pain when or longer rides, feel free to also comment below. With that said, let's move on to the next point. All right, so all of the methods before were pretty much free, just took a little bit of time or training. But now we move on to the bigger guns. And for the fourth point, I want to mention is seated riding. And you'll need a seat for that, or you need to DIY a seat out of foam or, or something. 
and seated riding is great especially for longer rides and there are some riders that mainly prefer to ride seated uh, and this is great because then you have more of the weight distributed evenly with your butt <laughs> and your legs. When I was doing range tests both on the Veteran Sherman and on the Monster Pro, it's just great to sit down and cruise. It takes a bit of getting used to to learn how to ride seated, but I think it's a great skill to learn. And if you want to decrease your pain, especially on longer rides, seated riding is pretty awesome. And make sure to also follow all the forums to check out what different seed mods people are doing because maybe one of them might be just the perfect option for you. So if seated riding, oh, I need to lean a lot <laughs> to turn on the Monster Pro, you get a comfy option for riding longer distances. And even if it's just like, you know, taking s sort of a break for a couple hundred meters or a couple kilometers and then standing up again, yeah, it just feels great and alleviates the pain. In the meantime, you can also like shake up your foot a bit when you get this a bit sore or you can just like take a walk uh, after a while take a break when you're tired of your legs just constantly standing up and down you can just grab a pole preferably not me uh, when you're waiting at an intersection so you don't need to step up step and step down every time especially for newer riders if you don't know how to step up and step down from the uc it's worth it to grab a pole wait and then keep on riding all right so seated riding a couple bonus small ones let's move on to the fifth trick and at this point i want to talk about pedals or foot plates now, usually when a wheel comes from the factory, there's not the best pedals or foot plates installed. Now, the size usually is already okay. That's something they learned in the meantime, but the grip tape tends to be really meh. And the easiest fix for that is just to get some better grip tape, like for example, Vicious grip tape. It's very easy to install different grip tape on your foot plates, especially for like Gotway wheels, and Emotions tend to have not the best sandpaper. King songs tend to be all right. Uh, but even after a while, the grip tape wears off and it, at some point you want to replace it. So for that, you just need to peel off the upper layer of the foot plate and put on a adhesive vicious grip tape or any other grip tape onto the foot plate. And this reduces pain by a lot. Like sometimes when I'm riding a wheel with just bad grip tape, I get tired so quickly. Uh, this is probably the first mod I would do to a wheel, especially in Gotways, if I want to have a more comfy ride. Now, if you want to have an even more comfy ride, then, well, you have to get one of those. These are spiked pedals uh, by Nelonove. Now, there's also other spiked pedals on the market. I, I had also the Hextex. I didn't try the Clark pedals yet, but these are my favorites by far. And let me tell you why. First of all, you have spikes here which is also from you know the mtb industry so you have a lot of grip with those pretty much if you put your foot down it doesn't move and the next thing i love about them is the shape so if you are riding through off-road if you're dry riding through bad weather rain all of the dirt or water just gets right through there so if you have a pedal with grip tape on top of it most of the gunk, gunk just stays on top and here it just goes right through and yeah you have still a big amount of grip whilst on pedals with grip tape you won't the next thing i love about them is that they're light and they're made out of polyamide so there's they're almost like a bit of suspension you know they they move a bit let me see if it can be catched on camera so this makes the ride a bit more comfortable and they also have a adjustable angle now i love to ride probably you've seen it in the clip before with a, with a sharp paddle angle it makes my ride more comfortable some people prefer to ride with a flat paddle angle but for my kind of riding sporty riding also off-road this is my pick and this is what you can do with the Nelanove. so in terms of pedals to alleviate your pain when riding i think is the best choice with that said let's move on to the sixth point And now I want to talk a bit about the right shoe for your ride. 
the right ride shoe, so to speak. Anyways, you want to get a shoe with a flat sole and possibly also more or less a flat inside. So looking at MTB shoes, looking at skate shoes or basketball shoes might be the best pick for you. Preferably also with a higher ankle because they will protect you more, that's one thing. And the second thing is then this will also decrease pain and fatigue on longer rides and on any rides with this wheel. So now when I'm riding on a wheel, I just, I'm just wearing high ankle shoes. Uh, the next thing is whether you want to get a shoe with a thick sole or a thin sole. And both kinds of shoe sole have their benefits and drawbacks. If you get a thin shoe sole, which is my preferred option uh, when I'm riding in my converse shoes, you get a good feeling for the ride, you can feel the road well through, your, through the electric unicycle. And I think that all in all, the ride is a bit more zippier and you can corner well, you're closer to the wheel. Yeah, I, I really like thin shoe soles that are, you know, that are not so thick. But if you want to have a bit more protection because, well, thicker soles mean more protection, less direct ride or more of a comfy ride, then getting shoes like MTB shoes with a thicker sole might be the option for you. Because when you, Jamal, because when you have these uh, thicker soles, you get more bump absorption, and I think all in all, it creates less fatigue on longer rides. So the choice is yours, but get a flat sole with a high ankle. So now let's move on to the seventh point. And now we'll have to talk about power pads. Now, power pads were sort of like a blow up thing that came, became very popular sort of all overnight in the electric unicycle industry and not without any reason. There's many benefits to power pads or jump pads like these. Oh no, my torque pads are ripping apart. Damn. Anyways, <laughs> uh, power pads are great. First of all, they prevent you from falling off the wheel here. So if you go into a big bump and you would fly off the wheel otherwise, this prevents your feet and yourself, because your feet are connected to your body, from falling off the wheel. And then you don't have to hold onto the wheel with the side pads so much if you have those power pads. I, actually, I don't have any side pads here on the wheel installed now currently. The second thing uh, in terms of power pads is that you need less force to accelerate and brake. Because usually you have to both hug the wheel and lean forwards to accelerate. And here you can just uh, rest your uh, shins against the power pad and then lean forward. You don't need to have this squeezy movement at the same time, both for braking and accelerating. It makes it a bit more difficult in terms of riding <laughs> seated, but, but getting power pads I think is a great choice to make the ride more comfortable more secure and less stressful. Now you don't need to buy pads like these right away, like 3D printed pads. You can also just make yourself some ones, like Kuji pads out of foam. But in terms of pads that I'm using, I'm using side pads, torque pads, testing Grizzler pads right now. And the side pads and the torque pads are pretty much my favorites. Um, if you want to get any of those, feel free to use the link in the description. And yeah, they cost around from 100 to 130 euro, uh, the 3D ones, foam ones, whatever foam you get. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very worth it. So yeah, let's move on to the eighth trick. And as said, it's getting increasingly more expensive and more tricky. But the eighth point is not so much expensive but tricky to do and this is changing the pressure on your tire oh no i'm kidding changing the pressure of the tire is just one thing <laughs> actually the tire pressure i should put earlier anyways if riding your ESC creates a lot of fatigue you might want to drop the pressure now be careful with that because when driving in lower pressure, it's easier to damage the rim. But if you're especially a lighter rider, you might want to decrease the pressure of your tire to, like say in 18 inch wheels to 30 PSI or 28. And in bigger wheels, well, whatever, 
works for you there. However, I always ride in higher pressure. I got used to it and I think the, the better cornering abilities and uh, the lower chance of damaging the rim I'd weigh, outweigh the benefits of lower pressure riding. So in my wheels, usually I ride at 40 to 45 PSI. Yes, it's not that comfortable on the MSP, especially with the off-road tire, but otherwise I can't jump any curbs. It's not the best to go downstairs. So, so most of the time I actually ride in higher pressure, but if you are just riding casually uh, on, mostly on asphalt, you don't do much, you don't do many curbs, and you watch out for the potholes, then you might try riding in a lower pressure. But the actual eighth trick I wanted to tell you is changing the tire. So the tire is a very important part of a electric unicycle. And you change the tire, you change the ride of the EUC completely. So if you are riding a lot off-road, if you're just riding top speed all the time and you don't care that much about cornering, on asphalt or on bike paths, then you might want to get a off-road tire for your electric wheel. It provides a lot more grip when riding off-road, well duh, but the ride tends to be also more stable during high speed. And when cornering, it won't wobble that much. However, if you care about oh, the bigger range, if you care about cornering on asphalt, you don't care about riding off-road, stick to your stock tire on your EUC or try some alternative motorcycle tires or e-bike tires available for your wheel. Make sure to check out my other video on that subject where I cover different sort of tires uh, linked here. But changing a tire is always tricky on EUC. There is no EUC currently that has a easily swappable uh, changing tire system. So yeah, it's just a... It's just a very tedious process and that's why I put it on the eighth point. Now let's move on to the ninth point and the ninth point is none other than get a different unicycle. <laughs> you know, a in-motion V5F can't be as comfortable as a MSP. A MSP or RS cannot be as comfortable as a Sherman and the Sherman is not as comfortable as the Monster Pro. And the Monster Pro off-road won't be as comfortable as a S18. There's loads of electric unicycles on the market and each and every one of them has different upsides and downsides. But generally speaking, a bigger diameter wheel will provide you a smoother ride. And here the Monster Pro with its 24 inch tire. Oh, it's so smooth. I just love it so much. Uh, it smoothens out, especially the smaller cracks on the road, cobblestone. Uh, it's, just, it's just really great. But if you want to have more protection about those ooh, bumps like these or really bad surface roads and off-road, then you need to consider a wheel with suspension like the S18, S20 upcoming, V11 or the new Bigode Hero. Because if you have suspension in your wheel, all of the bumps become pretty much, well, not non-existent, but much softer. It makes the ride a bit less direct, but yeah, if you have suspension in your wheel, that's the most comfortable ride against bumps. When it comes to just the smoothness of the ride, still I think the biggest tire, biggest wheel is king. But overall, as a universal comfy experience against bumps, off-road and stuff, well, suspension just wins. So yeah, the ninth point is the most expensive one. Uh, and the last one on my list. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like on it, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.